Hi everyone, it's Belinda Weaver here and I am wrapping up my conversations with the copywriter by talking today to Lucette. Hi Lucette. Hello. Now Lucette, you're a confident copywriter, you're in the UK and some of the things I've been trying to do with these little conversations is show everyone the journey of different copywriting businesses of all different levels because often we see the Instagram version or we see the webinar version we see the nice version and then what we don't see are the pivots and the um the ups and the downs and the changes and and the evolution as well and so that's what i'm really trying to dig into and we were just talking about our kids both being at school and i know we're going to talk about that in a bit yeah. <laughs> um, but firstly can you introduce yourself to everyone Yes, I can. So I am um, Lucette Funnel and my business is Birdsong Copywriting. Um, I have been a copywriter officially for two years, pretty much to the day. Um, yeah, so I help um, small businesses mainly, but I focus on um, businesses with it that are experience led. Um, so things like travel, restaurants, spas and wellness, events, venues, photographers, yeah, and I create personality-packed copy and results-driven ideas to help them stand out. Because when you are more about the how you do something rather than just what you sell, it's important that obviously you've got the right words to do that. Yes. Um, so yeah, that, that is me. I'm in the UK. I'm in a little corner, a little big bump on the side of the eastern side of the UK. Um, I have. I live with my husband, and I've got two small children, and as Linda said the youngest of which is just about to start school <laughs> we, have, we have so many parallels um but quick question like how did your copywriting in business get impacted by COVID because of course you're talking so, about a lot of those people who can't run their business anymore from 2020 2021 things are changing a bit now but yeah yeah so um I basically worked in the travel industry prior to running my own business. Oh, which is my next question. Let's talk about how this happened. Yeah, or it all kind of links. So basically March, well, Feb 2020, I just, I was furloughed, the scheme that they had in the UK. Um, and within, that's by June 2020, I was made redundant with about 70% of the other staff at my business. So it was just, everything just kind of went, oh. Yeah. Um, and I actually see it now as the best thing that could have happened because I was in a kind of job that I was like, oh, this is all right, but I don't really love it. I was just doing it. It paid the bills. It worked around the kids. Da, da, da. Yeah. Um, and I kind of just, I, I, I always love the how did you come across copywriting stories? Because I totally came across it by chance. And I went, hold on, I've been working in sales and marketing and operations and communications and oh, hold up, this is all the stuff that I could use to be a copywriter. And I kind of just have one of those real moments of going, aha, this could work. Yeah. So long story short, um, going back to what you were saying about how did COVID impact it? Well, I kind of officially started September 2020, um, kind of got going for about three months. And then the next lockdown in the UK, I think, can't remember, I lost track of it all. Yeah, back again. Much. I then had to take another three months off because I had both kids at home who were like two and five at the time and oh yeah one decided to start potty training that was fun and I kind of just had to go <laughs> let's just park that little business that I want to do over there because I just didn't really have any choice and at the time I found it really hard but looking back I'm actually it was a blessing in disguise because I was able to be with the kids and be there for them when they needed me yes so um so yeah so then kind of last September was kind of when things started picking up again and I was pretty busy through till July this year. And I've just, awesome. I've just taken August off so that I can be with the kids for the school holidays. Um, so, yeah, it, COVID has impacted it in so much as my business has always obviously been very much online and from home. But straight away, some of my first clients were in Wales, the other side of the country. I've got a US client probably things that I probably wouldn't have even thought about had I have not had COVID and everything been so easy and remote so and how about like the customers you're trying to target are they some are they now going right we need to get up and running are they dialing into copywriting more yeah because of the restrictions that they've had on their business yeah so the first kind of few months um I didn't really focus as much on travel 
partly because I knew that obviously I'd, I'd been in a marketing role that's made redundant so I was pretty confident there weren't many yeah. businesses but yeah there are people now aware that it plays an important part in their overall marketing strategy and that actually yes you've got to spend some money but that is going to lead to more business and it's going to make you stand out because with travel in particular it kind of um it obviously really emphasized how important it is to go with someone really really good and yeah. I was working for a luxury long-haul operator that customer experience was like number one you know every little detail was managed and at the time it was quite a challenge sometimes to sell that the extra cost whereas now the value that that offers to have that complete peace of mind oh, um, yeah like if you're only going to do one trip now because you you kind of have to look out for so many more things you want to make it a good trip that's an, mm -hmm. e an easier sell because yeah you know, a good trip you want to know you're going to be looked after you want to know all the details you want to make it outstanding so yes. obviously copy and of course well. slapdash travel comes with more risk now than just a bad experience yeah. like it's you need yeah. to make sure those details are taken care of i love that i love that you um you use that phrase once there actually i think you use it twice the gift the blessing and I think, you know, sometimes it's very hard when we go through these moments and these challenges. And one of the things I learned from working with Linda Perry, the mindset coach, was what is the gift in this? Yeah. It's hard to see, but I do love that you have been able to identify those because it, I think it makes you a bit more flexible in your approach as well, where you can be like, well, whatever's happening right now, I'm going to get through it. And I'm going to see a win out of it eventually. It's yeah. just all about how I how I look at this moment. Yeah, yeah, because it's easy to get wrapped up in in the the portrayal that you see, as you said when you introduced the call. You know, everybody's lives online. You kind of go, oh, but I've, you know, someone else has only just been going for a year, and they're already doing this and already doing that. And you kind of you do get the old comparisonitis going, but mm. definitely being able to look back and go that really worked for us and me and my life and my family um which has always been my kind of biggest priority that's yeah. that's what yeah you have to take from it and that's made me look at it with my youngest starting school that's really making me look at the next few months as a real opportunity rather than kind of worrying about am I going to have enough work or am I going to I don't know am I going to miss my daughter and what you know all of that kind of stuff I'm just going well this is an opportunity to yeah to make change and it's also, we just talked about um, the choices we make in small moments can mm. help us um, have the kind of life that we want. I'm always talking about create a business you love to work in. And we were talking about using school hours to kick our butt so that we can actually have a lifestyle that's um, free of work in the afternoons to be there for our kids and the evenings and the weekends. And I'm not saying, like, everyone has to make their own work choices, but I do know that more clients and more money and more followers and and more opportunities doesn't give you more time and so creating those boundaries now in the mm -hmm. first couple of years of your business will ricochet through the future years yeah as you have them in place which i think is so so important and sometimes you only realize how important it is when you've had no boundaries and you've burned out yeah. and all those kind of things. And you don't have to do that in order to appreciate it. But it's something we talk about a lot in confident copywriting, right? Definitely. I, you know, I really, that was what drew me to the group. I think in the first place was that certainly from, from your perspective, but from a lot of others that, that everybody's got their own way of doing things, but nothing's right or wrong. You, you make your rules for how you want it to work. Yes. And, and, and there's elements that you can learn from others or you can kind of help others and, you know, be reassured that you're not kind of doing this alone. Um, yeah, or wrong, or you're yeah, behind, wrong. or, you know, yeah. all those kind of things we tell That us. was a big thing to come from being employed for however many years, you know, 15, 20 years of being employed to then go self-employed and kind of, you, you're you so, I had a real moment where I went, oh, right, there aren't any rules, like, I, I make these rules <laughs> like it was I'll a real kind of that. defining moment and I yeah I still struggle with it a lot but because you've just had all this stuff like inbuilt and all these like terms and conditions and 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 laws and rules that you just kind of I worked for one company for quite a long time so you just well this was how we always did it I was like I don't have to do it that way anymore that's <laughs> I could do it my way 
It's Which lots is, of choice is very empowering, but it can also be a little crippling. So there's a stuff that we never knew we had to face as a business owner. Yes, yeah. very overwhelming. <laughs> and I give a shout out to, um, I think it's Seba, um, who's watching from Africa, just starting again in copywriting. So I hope you find oh. this interesting, my friend. So let's dig into some challenges. When you were starting out, so you've we're post lockdowns. You're like, all right, come on now. Now's now's it. Now I'm going. What were yeah. some of those first challenges you faced? For me, I think the biggest challenge was just getting out there and finding those first few clients, which I, I guess is fairly similar when someone's quite new to it. Partly because I didn't come directly from a copywriting role. As I say, I kind of took all the experience that I had and kind of went, oh, that all works. But therefore, mm. didn't have kind of. Um, I don't know, previous experience or clients that I could perhaps lift or move over or, you know, work with. So yeah, for me, it was just an and with it being COVID time, I couldn't get out to meet anybody. So everything was kind of online networking, which was OK. I'm, I'm a bit of an introvert. So I was kind of OK, just kind of going, hello, and sort of yeah. hiding in a little box somewhere. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that was a huge challenge because I kind of felt like, and again, I'm terrible for comparing myself to other people. I felt like everybody else had kind of got, well, I had this old boss that offered me this position or, or I had this and you got, but I didn't have any of that. I had to just go, right, where am I starting? Um, and I was, I'm not a big social media person. As I say, I'm quite introverted. I'm not someone that goes out there and wants to shout about myself. I mean, I know it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people, but for me, I remember setting myself up on Facebook. I hadn't been on Facebook for years. And I put this post out and I was like, oh my god I've said I'm a copywriter and what the hell are people going to think and then you kind of go oh for god's sake it doesn't matter like yeah 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 matter. but that was a big step you know that all those little things felt huge at the time yeah and now I kind of go well it wasn't that much of a big thing um but it was so in the moment and that's yeah. what I think we you know it's important to acknowledge the things that are hard for us right now but yeah. it's also super important to know that you will look back and yeah. go oh cool yes I've done that heaps uh -huh. of times now yeah and it's no big deal now that that perspective is everything but that yeah. sweaty moment in the moment sweaty in the middle moment that's tough yeah it's hard so there was that but there was and we've kind of covered it in the fact that I was saying I had to take time off but with two young kids that feeling of not quite being sure where to put my priorities um, yes. actually I, I was talking to someone earlier today and I was talking about it as different modes and I was kind of like I I was all oh I'm either in mum mode or I'm in work mode and I'm kind of getting to that stage where hopefully I'll have a bit of lucette mode which is like a whole separate thing that I haven't had for about eight or nine years uh -huh. <laughs> what that is but I found that so hard right to really kind of balance my time and my priorities you know I really wanted to give my all to my kids yeah. but I really wanted to give all my, my all to the the business and get it started and as I say again you see people that are kind of going oh I've done this and I've done this already and I'm like I haven't even got a website because I can't even look at it because my kids are screaming at me yeah um, so yeah it, it it was a challenge <laughs> but as I say when I look back on it I kind of now go it, it was the right thing I, I put my priorities in the right places I I knew deep down that I didn't want to just be working till midnight every night <laughs> I just had the uh the post brought in by my own little five-year-old helper oh, um <laughs> but no I think it's really it's a really point a great point because I know I really remember a moment when I had a baby who was a couple of months old and I was trying to do client work and I'd gone from having all the time to work and been able to indulge my obsession with this new thing to suddenly being like, yeah, no, you know, that idea that you're going to work when the baby naps and everything's going to just go along seamlessly is a, a dream. <laughs> and it was when I, that's when actually when I started learning to meditate I was like, yeah. I'm, my brain is split in two all the time and it comes with a lot of guilt. Yeah, it does. Because I want to be in two places and I'm not in two places and I'm just failing at everything and it continued yeah. that dialogue. And so learning meditation was my first step to going, I want to just be more present in the moment so that I, when I'm working I don't feel guilty. Yeah. 
But when I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids. I only had one there and she was a baby and she didn't even move on the floor. And I didn't even appreciate how easy that was. <laughs> but well, that's it. You, you, it now and you kind of go, oh, actually, that wasn't so bad. But, but the, in the moment, it's very different. Um, yeah. And, yeah. The, and the choices we make along the way can help us. You know, I often talk about different success buckets. We have our business and our friends and family and our fun and recreation and our self and spirituality and our home and environment. And, and if we, we make time for each of those and without one just wiping everything out, yeah, I think there's just more joy to be had. Yeah, and I think that that whole kind of concept as well was very new because, again, coming from the employed world where that people don't really talk about that as much. It's only since I've been in this kind of freelancey, self-employed world and certainly in, in confident copywriting where people are kind of going, no, this is how it is. I have kids and I have a life and I have work and I want to make it work and I want to balance all those different buckets because they're all important to me. But yeah. I guess kind of covid work from home thing kind of helped level that out as well a little bit but but yeah prior to all of that i didn't sort of really think that i'd need to have that time to think about all of those different bits if you see what yeah. I mean. and we don't often get the choice I was either at work or i was at home and that was it it was that you know the line was there that's right and we don't often have the choice and the freedom to go actually i want to change the dynamic of this no so let's talk about how your business has changed and evolved since getting it started to now. What are some things that you're like, well, this is different? Yeah, so um, I have more regular work, which is which is good. Um, I'm not sort of scrabbling around on, on networking calls all the time. I mean, there's a lot that I am now getting to the stage where I feel I can focus more on my marketing rather than it being a kind of scattergun approach. Yes. Um, I, in, with all of this, I mean, we've kind of covered it, but I really have realised that that kind of flexibility is what I want out of this business anyway. So I can plan ahead knowing that that's what I want rather than trying to plan in, you know, a full week's worth of work just because that's what I think I should do when I'm running a business. Yes. And actually going, no, I now know, yes, my daughter is going to be at school five days, or both my kids are, but one of those days I don't want to be working. I want to keep that clear for life stuff and just to enjoy some time to myself because I know that that helps me write. I know it helps me get ideas and, and everything. Yeah. And it's not a luxury. It's not, it's not pampering. No. It's keeping yourself alive in a way that is joyous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and learning, I mean, that's a big shift is that those first few months I felt like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I thought I had all this experience that would be really good for this. And now I don't know what I'm doing or what's, what are these different formulas for writing and how, how do I write a website? You know, all these kind of like real panic. But I was lucky enough to do the masterclass last summer and that yeah. you know, made such a huge difference to my confidence to just kind of be able to pick up my bible as I call it you know it's like this big I can't see on screen yeah. you know and I'm like why, why, why would I just, I just remind myself of what I need yeah. to think about and it's just that confidence of coming back to something that you know is is there so the, the confidence has changed um having having clients that I feel like are more regular and that I can kind of someone can come to me now and say I want to you know I'm looking at this or I, I'm, I want to build a website or I want to do a sales page and I I just have that confidence to go, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And I can quote, okay, I know what I'm quoting, I feel comfortable with that. Um, nice, that is huge because yeah. those are the moments that paralyze us and yeah. start. that's when we start telling stories to ourselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a good, good, confident place, an exciting place. Yeah, good stuff yeah. coming up. Well, let's talk about what's coming up. Like what, what big goals do you have? And this could be I want to do this in three months or like, I've decided I'm going to do this in five years or like, what does that look like? But what are you excited about? Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I touched on it so much. I mean, you can tell how much it means to me that I need some loose set time. <laughs> I just, because I've been mum and work since my kids started school, I, I, a big part of this is now finally having that flexibility to just do some stuff that I love to bring out all my joy and my creativity. Um, and, and really that's kind of my big goal for the next few months is just to, 
go, just go with that and it yes. be okay. Allow myself to do it, not feel guilty for kind of going, well, I'm going swimming. I mean, I'm exercise. I'm desperate to do exercise. I cannot find space in my life to do exercise, but I know how good it, does, it is for me. So I'm desperate to go swimming. That's my mm -hmm. plan. I'm going to go swimming every Friday. Um, I just, hate it is. Yeah. And then the other thing that's more slightly business related, um, but sort of personal related, is I'm hoping to set up some networking walks in my local area. Oh, so I, love I, this. I've, I've seen it in like various places. And I, as far as I can tell, there's nothing particularly local to me. But all I want to do is just get people together in a nice like coastal walk. And we all walk along together for a couple of hours. And then we sit and have a cup of tea and a bit of cake. That's all I want to do. <laughs> yes. But yes. I miss people. I miss being in as part of a team. That is, a, you know, still quite a big challenge. So, I just want something that doesn't feel networky and. But yeah, yeah. Just want it to be an, an opportunity to just meet some like-minded people that are in other businesses and just chat. And I love this that you're like, there is nothing there that I want to do. So I am going to make something that I want to do. This is exactly what I did. I created a small net, small business networking event in Melbourne because I was like. Yeah. I don't like any of these. No. So I'm going to make one that I actually want to go to. Yeah, um, exactly. It's great for your marketing skills, your presentation, like, and you get to, uh, for me, I wanted to get better at remembering people's names. Yeah. And it's like just that, the power in going, you know what, I'm going to create something. Yeah. Yeah. It was I'm totally like a, a 3 a.m. idea where I was like, love mm, it. Quick, scribble this down on my phone because yes. this is going to disappear. And and I'm just like, yeah, it's I, it it feels right. I would 100 percent attend. Yeah, I know. It's been been coast, far. Cup of tea and a cake. Damn. <laughs> All right. Well, when you syndicate it, yeah, you can you can do it in sync. You can just find so a little more. We'll, too. We'll call you at the Love end. It. <laughs> and so let's just loop back quickly to confident copywriting. What are some favorite resources? Maybe just like one but if you have more you can listen I, I, well i was i was thinking about this because i was like i i mean i literally i i love everything that i've ever used and there's so much it's another thing i'm going to be doing is is really digging into so many because there's always ones like oh i could do oh i want to do that oh, i haven't had time but i had um uh, a, a client i'd done some work for and she came through asking about a sales page and sales pages seem quite big and scary when you're quite new you're like whoa that's like the world of it's really big right yeah, yeah. And the resource that you have, the webinar and sales pages, was incredible. It it just, the way it took me through all the things that I was going to need to cover, it gave me the ability to quote confidently because I kind of could much better work out what sort of time scales I'd be needing. So I thought, I'm not going to need that amount of time to do that. I'm going to need a bit of time to do that. Yeah. Um, it, just, it just took all that sort of daunting feeling away and just gave me so much confidence. So... Yeah, I love like, that. you know, I love that because it's in all the it's the way I approach writing. It's just a series of blocks that you put together. Yeah. And sometimes you just need the starting blueprint, but it's it. demystifying it from like that's something. Yeah. To like, yeah. Oh. And everything's different, you know. I'm not one to sort of necessarily do everything by template, but exactly that. It was just those, well, I'm gonna need a bit of that, and I'm gonna need a bit of that, and then I'm gonna sort of put it all together and, and make sure it flows and make sure it's right. And it just yes. it felt it felt good so um oh, yeah oh, that was really good but I remember and I was racking my brains to try and think what it was when I first came across you I mean I think I came across you via the hot copy podcast initially but there was another um resource and I can't remember what it was it might have been off an email or on your old website or something and it was I remember vividly sitting in my back garden listening to it and just going yes yes this is it somebody gets it like and it was I think it was you talking about your kind of route to finding copywriting but there was something in it about being a mom as well and working and then the other part of it was talking about um like creating your first portfolio and when you haven't got any clients and kind of going well you can just create something you don't have to have a client you can just write a web page you can just write a blog or you can just write an email that would be sufficient as a sample and I was like oh yeah I can <laughs> and it's so funny because I'm like that too where I get so into the track and into the zone and then I'm like wait what we're allowed to do that yeah yeah you can just make it up yeah we're just gonna make it up then <laughs> yeah. and sometimes you need someone else to go by the way 
permission granted or as well as like you also don't need that yeah I yeah. know it's on every checklist but you don't need it, you need it. <laughs> oh cool. I'm so glad um that you can like I love that you're talking about quoting confidently understanding the mechanics of it but not getting stuck in how things should be done choosing your way it's I'm here for all of it Lisa I love it yes. so where can people find you so I have my website which is birds birdsongcopywriting.co.uk I am on LinkedIn as under my name Lucette Funnel yes. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as birdsong copywriting as birdsong underscore copywriting I can't remember um <laughs> we set up our handle and then we're like it's just there now um yeah that that Ooh. is me well thank you so much this has been an utterly joyous conversation I I, I high fives through all these things, your own journey, your own time frame, working out what you need to prioritize and making small choices. Like it's those choices we make in small moments. You know, I talked about I had a bath in the afternoon. Mm. You know, it's going for a walk. It's choosing you. It's choosing your family. It's choosing, you know, whatever you need to do and not letting the business just swamp everything out because we love what we do. It's easy to become obsessed with it. Yeah. But it's also a means to an end, whether that's fulfillment, time, choice, control, freedom. Yeah. We have to make sure we feed the other things as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've totally inspired that with me. So high fives back at you. Yeah. <laughs> and here's cheers to kids being at school. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to let you get on with your evening. Thank you for staying up Thank and talking you. to me. I'm going to check on mine, open my post, and yeah. I will see you in confident copywriting. Thanks, Belinda. Take Bye. care. Bye.